I had several different experiences with Lego when I was a kid. I remember going to a um, playgroup when I was really, really tiny and um, they had some Fabuland characters and stuff there and some very basic Lego bricks. So they're kind of little animal characters that I loved playing with there. Um, one of the um, products that I really remember owning myself was the Yellow Castle. So that was launched in the 70s. I probably got it a little bit later than that because I was born in 75. I think I had it when I was around six or seven years old. Really love that. I've actually got a photograph of myself with my dad and my granddad um, playing with that set. And, um, and then the other very special thing um, about Lego to me was um, I have a brother and we were very, very different. <laughs> we didn't get on a lot of the time and we're fighting like cats and dogs most of the time, but Lego was the one, um, um, Lego sets were the one sort of true product where we actually could sit down and play nicely together. And um, even to the point that after my mum and dad had put us to bed, we had separate bedrooms. I used to sneak back into his room. We'd quietly tip all the Lego out on the floor while we were supposed to be in bed. Um, carry on building until um, we heard my parents coming up the stairs. So then we had to switch the lights out. And I then, the minute I heard their bedroom door closed, I had to scamper across the, the, the carpet covered in Lego back to my own room <laughs> without screaming of standing on it all. And um, yeah, so I've got a lot of really lovely um, memories of, um, of, of Lego as a child. And it was actually, um, while I was playing with, with my Lego sets as a kid, I remember that was the point where I'd, I came to the realization I wanted to be a toy designer when I grew up. When you're walking down the toy aisle, you can immediately point out who the intended audience is for that section of toys. There are the aisles full of pink ballerina slippers, easy bake ovens, and Barbies. And then there's the aisle full of blue monster trucks, superhero costumes, and action figures. Do you see the common theme? One side is pink, and the other is blue. And when you're a boy and you want to play with Barbie, your parents might tell you no, because those were made for girls, and vice versa. But where did this idea of pink toys and blue toys come from? And what effect do these different toys have on kids as they grow up? Today, we chat with Matthew Ashton, the Vice President of Design at LEGO, who helps us walk through the past, present, and future of gendered toys. I'm Matthew Ashton, and this is Pride. Pride is supported by Magic Spoon. So if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know I've been trying to cut down on carbs and sugar and junk food, but I love cereal. And I love to have cereal at the worst possible time, like at midnight right before I go to bed. Luckily, I found Magic Spoon, and it is the perfect midnight snack. It's like cheating, but it isn't. It has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. So you could technically have two and no one will say anything. Plus, there are only 140 calories per serving or 280 calories if you have two bowls. It's keto friendly, gluten free, soy free, low carb, and GMO free. It really has it all, and they have so many amazing flavors. Like right now, I'm really into jelly donut. Uh, it, it's got like a donut-y flavor, but just a hint of it, and it is perfect for when you're really craving something delish. And if you and your family have different opinions on cereal flavors, don't worry. Magic Spoon's variety pack comes with four flavors. Usually, I go for cocoa fruity, frosted, and peanut butter, but when those special flavors come in, I definitely try them. I just had some leftover birthday cake flavor. It was a limited edition thing, and it is honestly my favorite way to start the day. Cake for breakfast? Yes. But you can always have a bowl for lunch, or in the afternoon, or for dinner, or after dinner, or right before you go to bed, like me. To get your hands on a variety pack of Magic Spoon, just go to magicspoon.com pride. If you use the special promo code pride while you're checking out, you'll save five dollars. Five whole dollars. That's enough to almost buy another box of cereal. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you the money, no questions asked. Or you could just send me all the boxes and be like, here, happy birthday, have some cereal. And I'd be like, thanks, man. I have a feeling you won't need a refund though. Trust me, my pantry is fully stocked with Magic Spoon at all times. It is so good, I have like eight boxes. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com pride and use the promo code pride to save five full dollars. Thank you. 
At one point, pink was actually considered to be a male color, while blue was seen as feminine. But after World War II, Rosie the Riveter traded in her factory blues for June Cleaver's pink apron, and the rest is history. Pink is almost always associated with girls, and blue with boys. Then in the 40s, companies began to notice that if they marketed toys, clothing, and other kid products to a specific gender, wealthier families would pay for a new set for each child they welcomed into their home. So toy industries began to adhere to two gender binaries exclusively. But it's not just the color that's different. The toys being marketed for boys usually involve action and violence of some kind, while toys for girls focus more on nurturing and caretaking. By the early 60s, Barbies were being pushed on young girls, while boys were expected to play with G.I. Joe action figures. Growing up, I really liked My Little Pony. I loved all the toys and I watched all the movies. Wind Whistler was my favorite. My mom was very encouraging, and if I wanted the toy, she bought it for me. But what happens when a family is not encouraging and only lets their child shop from one side of the toy aisle, the one that is seen as gender appropriate by society standards? I know, I struggled myself, um, especially when I was growing up as well, there was toys that I was allowed, there was toys that I weren't allowed because they were for girls or, or whatever. For kids, this can be a hard pill to swallow. They're left wondering, why can't I play with the toy I want to play with? For Matt, who was not exposed to the LGBTQIA community at a young age, gendered toys made him feel even more alienated from his peers. That I can remember, of course, there was very colorful rainbow related things, there, but not anything um, related um, to Pride um, specifically or the LGBTQ community. And even with what I was seeing on TV, there was so little representation that as a kid, I felt very alone in a way that I didn't know other kids like me at school and didn't really understand why I was different and, um, and not having a lot of information or people talking about these things around me made it really tough for me to understand what was going on with myself. But even LEGO has released products with a specific audience in mind. If you look at some of the sets they've released, some follow that same gendered pattern. I think there was periods within the toy industry where things did become quite gendered for a while, and we may have sort of fallen into that trap a little bit ourselves. Lego City seems to be marketed to boys, while Lego Friends is more marketed to girls. Both sets have different packaging and characters to adhere them to a specific audience. But each set has more than one function. They're fun to play with, and they can be educational for kids. We have so many different product lines targeting kids, and of course, there's so much stuff that kids can learn from toys um, that they may not experience in, in real life. We've got other properties, um, like Ninjago, which is, is an action line um, based on ninjas and things like that. And there's so much um, stuff that kids learn about teamwork and perseverance and, and all of that kind of stuff from a product line like that. While some toys created for boys teach them about stereotypical masculine roles and professions and heroism, other sets for girls tend to focus on being domestic and beautiful and on socializing. Not to mention, all gendered toys play into the idea of there being only two genders, that some kids get to wear tutus while others can't. Gender is an identity and is not based on someone's biological sex. We know that. Matt says parents have become very reliant on toys to teach their children valuable life lessons. But with so much responsibility, it's up to the toy makers to ensure the right message is being conveyed. That it's more than, oh, it's just something to keep them occupied or something to have, have fun with, that we can actually help kids learn sort of valuable lessons, whether that's about how to be a good friend or any of the, the, the kind of motoric skills or counting skills and all of that and creative skills that you get from Lego. I think it's um, something that parents are expecting more and it's actually something that helps parents have a conversation with their children about things as well because it's, it's often difficult to bring up topics and stuff but if you've got something that you can play with them with and talk about these things at the same time I think that that can can really sort of help break the ice on some some topics that could be um, tricky for, for families to have conversations about. 
A survey conducted in 2019 by Ryan Watson, Christopher Weldon, and Rebecca Poole says about 24% of U.S. adolescents identify as queer. So it's more important now than ever that toys are focused on inclusion rather than masculine and feminine stereotypes. And I think we need to sort of be breaking those um, barriers down and, and, and finding ways to make everybody feel like anything that we create, whether you're boy, girl, non-binary, what, whatever your gender, whoever you choose to love, that there's something um, out there um, for you with, with what we create. In 2019, Mattel, the multinational toy manufacturing company, created the first gender-neutral doll. It had a basic figure, interchangeable hair, and a wardrobe that had everything from tutus to graphic tees and pants. It was one step forward towards inclusive toy making, but there's still work to be done. Studies show that toys are more gendered now than they were 50 years ago. It's because of advertising pressure and the popularity of gender reveal parties among families that drives toy companies to separate their products this way. So what are we doing about it? When we come back, Lego's Pride Collection and the future of inclusive toy making. Pride is supported by Best Fiends. After a long day, how do you relax? Some folks read or watch TV, while others bake or play video games. For me, I like to change into something comfy and curl up on the couch with my best friends in Best Fiends. You know who I'm talking about. Those adorable little bugs that live in the top-rated mobile puzzle adventure? Yeah, that's them. Best Fiends offers hours and hours of fun, casual gameplay that never gets old. With thousands of levels, plus new content and events added all the time, you will never run out of fun. I recently hit level 711, and now I'm on my way to 712. It's taking me a little longer than I wanted, but I'm gonna get there. The best thing about Best Fiends for me is that the characters are so cute. I love them, and I really want them to win. So when I don't get past a level for the first couple of tries, I start focusing until I've done those little buggers proud, which is relevant because it's Pride Month. And then when I get through it, it is such a rush. I've been playing this game for more than a year now. It basically got me through LA's lockdowns. And as I said, it's my go-to game for de-stressing. My producer Ryan got me hooked and he's literally playing right now, looking at his phone. He's not paying attention to me at all. With Best Fiends, there's something new today and tomorrow and every day after that. You'll never get tired of solving the puzzles and Best Fiends will never run out of fun. Trust me, never. If you find yourself glued to your phone on level 611 in the next few days, you can thank me for that. Download Best Fiends free today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Welcome back. Today we're speaking with Matthew Ashton, a 20-year toy veteran and the vice president of design at Lego. Before the break, we broke down the history of gendered toys and the impact toys can have on a child's development. So how did Matthew get his start in toy making? As a kid, I loved my toys in, in general and um, I did a lot of arts and crafts and things and then loved stuff like Transformers and Star Wars and My Little Pony and a whole range of things. Lego was really special to me because it was sort of um, a creative medium that actually you can design with Lego from, from being a child as well. Um, but when I had the realization I wanted to be a toy designer, that was after I'd watched I really loved Pinocchio, the Disney movie where a toy comes to life. I just watched Big um, with Tom Hanks in where it's a little kid that grows up and becomes a toy designer. And that's where the sort of little light bulb went off in my head um, um, where I really thought this was something I'd like to do. But at that point, you also don't think it's a real thing because you don't meet any toy designers. You're like, that's what Santa's helpers do. Matthew continued to pursue his passion for art, whether it was photography, sculpting, or graphic design. You name it, he tried it. Then he went to a university in Brighton. And studied fashion design um, with business studies there. And by the time I graduated, um, we had a, a runway show and a static exhibition in London that some headhunters from the industry happened to be at, from all different kinds of industries and displaying my work there. We only had a really limited space to display um, any of our, our designs. Most fashion designers just hang up one garment 
and have their portfolio at hand. I was being a bit indecisive, couldn't decide which garment it was, so I did a miniature version of my catwalk collection on Barbie dolls. And there happened to be somebody at the same exhibition going to check out some industrial designers and product designers at the, the show as well. They happened to walk past my stand. They were from Lego, loved the Barbies, but also some of the children's wear stuff um, that I'd done um, as well. They were working on some products for girls at that point and thought I could be um, a really good asset to the team. So um, they left their business card. I got in touch, managed to get some freelance work, and then ultimately um, got my full-time job at Lego and moved to, to Denmark. After 21 years at LEGO, Matthew says the toy company is determined to create more inclusive products, like their new Pride LEGO set. Since I've been at the company, there's been a real concerted effort to, to sort of rebalance that out, make sure that we have um, products that are appealing to everybody and not alienating um, anyone. And, and we really, as well with that, um, not only do we have the toys and the play sets that we make, but there's a lot of um, animated content that we do. You know, we do collectible minifigures. We've really worked to, to make sure that we have a 50-50 um, gender split um, within within those to make sure that we're representing um, male and female characters um, as well. So we've, we've, we've really done what we can and are continuing to make sure that that's part of our mission as well, to, to, to really include everybody in what we do. So what changed? What caused large companies like Lego to want to release a more inclusive set? Obviously, the world has has been quite divided on, on many, many different topics and things and, and quite a tough place to live. So I think I've reflected on that personally. I think as a society, we've also um, reflected on um, this. And then as Lego as a brand, like we can all be doing a little bit more to be getting along better, seeing the best in each other. And I think that's why we've launched this set as a starting point, but we definitely want to um, continue in finding all different ways that we can be more inclusive and shining a light on, 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 on the different kind of people that need it. In honor of Pride Month, LEGO launched the Everyone is Awesome set. It's the brand's first LGBTQIA collection. I was very happy when they said they'd, they'd done it. And I think as well for me, being um, growing up an LGBTQ kid, myself, I'm gay, and and also knowing as a child that I struggled, that there wasn't, I, I was realizing I was gay, like in um, mid 80s and things. And of course, there wasn't a huge amount of representation around there, none in toys at all. Matthew originally designed the set for his own use, but somehow it ended up on store shelves. A little bit of a funny story. I was, I was moving um, desks at work and wanted to create something for my new desk that kind of reflected me um, in a way. So I built the very first version of this set as more of, of something I just wanted to display on my own desk. And at the same time, we were having a lot of discussions internally at the Lego company to figure out um, ways that we could be much more outspoken on different issues that sort of encourage sort of empathy and understanding and, and seeing through um, and embracing everybody else's differences. So um, the two things kind of gelled together quite nicely. I was like, oh, I've actually got something on my desk that I think could be really, really good um, that we could launch to celebrate um, a statement like that. So um, the, the sort of stars aligned and, and we brought it to life and made it a, a real thing that people can buy now. The set includes 11 figures, all representing different genders, races, and sexualities. They're monochrome and represent a different color from the pride flags. Obviously, um, we're inspired by the, 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 obviously the classic flag is, is part of it, but we also wanted to make sure that we included the black and brown colors as well to say, look, there's all different um, people from different walks of life, different ethnicities, different backgrounds and races that are part of the LGBTQ um, community. And then, of course, we also wanted to really acknowledge and celebrate um, the trans community as well. So that's why we've got the, the pale blue, white and, and white and pink as well. So we just wanted to say, this is for absolutely everybody. Everybody has a right to 
express themselves, use their imagination, get creative, and and that's what we stand for as a brand. So so that's that's really what we were we were wanting to achieve with this is just to say, look, we're here for everybody, and everybody is more than welcome to 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 join in the fun and get creative together. The set is pretty simple, so it doesn't have as many life-building skills as some of the other LEGO sets, but the lesson it teaches is crucial. We are working with um, all of our different product lines that are, are targeting kids as well um, to find ways through the stories that we tell with the, the content that we create um, that can encourage kids to sort of be really um, see through each other's differences, see that everybody has got something great um, inside them, um, to show them that how different um, everybody is, that everybody can be awesome and has the potential to be awesome. And we really want um, to sort of inspire those kids um, to, to thrive and learn to be good friends to each other. And, um, and then hopefully that will lead to a much more sort of positive, inclusive and, and happier world in the future as well. It's a statement piece and was designed to be displayed in your home. But even though it doesn't have as many play features as other sets, Matthew says everyone can enjoy this collection. It's titled Everyone is Awesome because we believe everyone is awesome. So it's, it's, it's whoever wants to sort of join in, join in the fun, get creative and, and build with it is, is who we want to, to celebrate through this product. In addition to the Pride set, Matthew says Lego has included several positive themes in their films to help inspire children. With the movies that we've already created, we really tried to tackle some topics around um, inclusivity and, and certain issues that kids have faced. So like Lego Movie 2 um, very much um, had um, some emphasis on sort of kids dealing with toxic masculinity and um, also um, a little bit of gender stereotyping and things and sort of empowerment of girls and things. So I think there's a lot of stuff um, like that that we've already incorporated in the movies that we've already made and we're just going to build on that um, even more moving forward. There have been other steps towards inclusion in recent months, like Hasbro's decision to remove the Mr. from the title of their Mr. Potato Head toy. Some toys are also being modified to help children with special needs, like Mattel, who partnered with the National Federation of the Blind to release the first ever set of UNO cards in Braille. So the more that we can get representation out in the world through whatever format, whether it's through toys, TV shows, movies, content, um, I think that's just um, such a positive thing that we can do to, to make sure that everybody knows there's a place for them in the world. There is a community out there that um, that can support and love them. They're not alone in, in all of this. You can buy the Everyone is Awesome LEGO Pride collection by visiting lego.com, going to any brand store location, or by visiting Legoland in California. To keep up with Matt, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter as at Matthew with two T's, double underscore, Ashton, and that's A-S-H-T-O-N. And you can follow Lego at Lego on Instagram and at Lego underscore group on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Pride is a production of Straw Hut Media. If you like the show, do me a favor and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and now TikTok at Pride. And tune in weekly for new episodes featuring amazing queer people. Be sure to share this episode with your friends and subscribe to our podcast too. You can follow me at Levi Chambers. Pride is produced by me, Levi Chambers, Maggie Bowles, Ryan Tillotson, and Caitlin McDaniel. Edited by Sebastian Alcala and Daniel Ferreira. Sound mixing by Sebastian Alcala.
I remember feeling that way. Like, oh, I'm not supposed to like wind yeah. whistler from My Little Pony. Um, you even know their names as well. Well done, you. <laughs> yes. Um, I loved the movies too, was, you know, obviously. Straw Hut Media.